Good morning, guys and gals. Happy Tuesday to you. Uh, it's beautiful out. Hopefully, everybody's healthy, wealthy, and wise on your end. Today, we're going to continue working with natural logs and base E problems. Specifically, uh, we learned sort of how to type those in yesterday with our cell phones, but today we're going to apply them. Uh, and we'll also, we're going to start with continuously compounded interest problems as well. Um, so the notes are less problems, but the problems that we have are a little harder. So it's a give or take that way. Very similar with our homework, um, less problems, but a little harder. So yeah, with all that said, let's do this thing. Sorry about the spring. As always, good time to pause the video and grab a pen or pencil, piece of paper and follow along. All right. So. Yesterday, just for recollection, we learned about base E, which that's just the base uh, for exponents. We also learned about the natural log or ln. These two are inverses of one another. That's going to be huge because we use the natural log to cancel out base E. If you're saying, what do you mean, Mr. Her? You want to make sure you're tuned in on this. Right now we have e to the power of x equals 3. To cancel out the e, a.k.a. to eliminate it, we have to take the natural log of both sides. So I'll take the natural log of e to the x. I'll take the natural log of 3. Okay, And this is some pre-calc concepts. So for a lot of us, this is going to be new. All right. The natural log and the E, they are inverses. That means that they're going to cancel out. Over here, we're left with X equals the natural log of 3. Or when you type that in your calculator, you get approximately 1.10. Okay. And if you're saying, Mr., how do you type that in? You press 3, and then you hit natural log if you're using your cell phone calculator. Okay. Letter B, same concepts, just a little more difficult. We have e to the negative x equals 35. Well, once again, there's nothing we can do right now except to try and eliminate that e. So we're going to take the natural log of both sides. Okay. Well, when we do that, the natural log and e... They're inverses, just like squaring and square roots, just like multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. They're inverses, so these cancel. We're left with negative x equals the natural log of 35. Okay, But we don't want negative x. We want x. Divide both sides by negative 1. So x equals the negative natural log of 35. And once again, if you type this in, 35, in your cell phone calculator, press natural log, then we want the negative of that answer, or in this case, negative 3.56. All right? Let's keep rolling. C and D are a little more involved. Once again, you definitely want to stay tuned in. Okay? We have 72 times e to the x equals 36. Just like any other variable, we have to isolate this first. What You might say, well, what do you mean, Mr. Herr? We can't just take the natural log of both sides right away. We have to divide both sides by 72. The reason we're dividing is because that will isolate e to the x. 360 divided by 72, that gives us 5. And now look, what we have here is exactly what we had here, just with a 5 in place of a 3. So I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. The e and the natural log cancel. x equals the natural log of 5. Or to the nearest hundredth, 1.61. Okay? Last but not least, letter D. Very similar to C. We're going to divide both sides by 12. Okay? When we do that, we get e to the 8x. That's new. We'll wait on that. Equals... 25. Okay. Now, we'll, we'll deal with that 8x in a moment, but we still have to take the natural log of both sides. Okay. When we do, the natural log and the e, they cancel. Once again, they're inverses. So we're left with 8x 
equals the natural log of 25. But we don't want 8x, we want to solve for x, so divide both sides by 8. x equals the natural log of 25, all of which divided by 8, aka when you type it in, about 0 0.40. Okay. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hopefully that's not too, 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 too bad. Um, and you can tell, like, it's just the way I think. Why should you even care about this? It's huge when we're talking about continuously compounded interest. No, I'm not going to make you define it, um, but you definitely want to be tuned into this equation. It's known as PERT. The account balance is the principal times E, this is the same E we've been using in all our problems, to the rate times time power. Okay, so I'll set this up and, you know, we'll talk through how to, how to type it in our, our cell phones, you know, and whatnot. Okay, so let's do this thing. You open a 401k with 100000 or excuse me, with $10,000, averaging 8% return, compounded continuously. If you left that money in the account for 20 years, what would your new balance be? Okay. Oh, one thing, that time, this must always be in years, okay? So let's roll with this. We have our principal, which is $10,000, times E to the, our rate is 8%, was a decimal, that's 0 0.08 times 20 years, okay? So... If you're saying, well, mister, how do we type this in our cell phones? What I would do, I'm not you, obviously, I would multiply that together first. So you get 10,000 times E to the 1.6 power, okay? And then we'll work in reverse. 1.6, and then press the E to the X button, times 10,000. Now, and you guys will probably get a chuckle out of this, my cell phone's being used as a sound machine for my one daughter, so I can't show you how to type it in on the cell phone right now. I hope that's all right. But when it's all said and done, that $10,000, now you did leave it in the account for 20 years. That means you didn't touch it, you didn't withdraw anything, none of that. Um, you end up with $49,530.80. Thirty-two cents. Now, before you you say, "Holy mackerel, that's unbelievable!" Eight percent return—that like never happens on compound interest. Usually, for compound interest, you're looking at like a one percent return, um, unless it's credit card working against you. That's a whole other story for a whole other time. All right, let's keep rolling. An IRA with $25,000 averaging 4% return compounded continuously. If you left that money in the account for 18 years, what would your new balance be? All right, same idea. We're just going to roll because um, I know the video is getting long. 25000 the principal, times E, check, to the rate, which is 0 0.04 times time, which is 18. Okay. 0 0.04 times 18, unless I'm nuts, which is possible, we get e to the 0 0.72 power times 25,000. Once again, if you're typing this in your cell phone, you'll type in 0 0.72, then press e to the x, then take that amount times 25,000. When it's all said and done, we end up with 51,000, sorry about the bad one, $360.83. All right. Hey, hopefully that's not too, 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 too bad, guys and gals. Don't forget PERT. You're going to need that in our homework, um, but I'll, I'll put that on our homework for you as well. All right. Hey, have a great day. Peace.